Okay, so now just to see how far I am from finishing it, obviously that color needs to change. And this might be a good opportunity, whoops, uh, a good opportunity to do a variation on the red, right? Because you can see the different pinks and things involved. So I might go deeper with that and then actually go a little bit lighter with this one. So now I'm kind of fine tuning, oops, not that one. This big one. Fine tuning them a little bit. And then I can move, move the, the layer order, right, to reflect what I need. And it becomes about adjusting the things. Better to keep it simple. Um, I just need a slight oval for the mouth. But to know where the mouth goes, I might turn on that top layer. And I'm going to do a dark shape first. Then transform it. Command plus to zoom in. Bless you. Command T, right click within. Get all the transform options, warp it, curve it down. Doesn't need to match exactly, just needs to fill the space. Right. Now move that layer up. There we go. And now put something hard edged and bright on top of it to show those teeth. So again, detail takes just as long as big shapes, but you want to just choose them more carefully. What details are absolutely essential to your composition? And I'm going to challenge you to be kind of as minimal as you can, especially at this point, because we just want to get something turned in. I'll just curve out that bottom angle. Yeah. Yes. So let's say I wanted to change the color of this shape, this thigh. So I'm using my auto select layer to select that color. It will show me which layer it is that will be highlighted in gray. I have to double click on the picture icon within the layer and it will bring up my color selections. These are what are called layer properties. And so if I want to make it brighter, for instance, I can do that. So that's just how I'm getting to the shape. Then I'm using command right bracket to bring it up on top of things. So once I've selected the layer, you'll see that it shows gray. Then you double click on this window and it will unlock the layer properties. It's not connected to your color options. That's for painting and making pixels. This is for attaching a color to the vector, which is, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's, it gives you like perfect fill every time. Now notice we haven't used any layer styles yet, right? So all the colors are just perfectly flat colors. And that is intentional. And that way I can kind of mess with them a little bit and play with just really slight color variations that I think might be interesting. And then especially layering up those, those layers. So I've got the big guy here. I think it's working. I just need these little uh, blocky shards. And this allows me to show you one other aspect of vector tools, which you don't have to use if you don't want to. So this aspect is that a vector is a path, and that path can be filled, like you see here, but it can also be outlined. Just very quickly, I'm going to duplicate and transform two little eyes. So the difference, and this is why I chose this, uh, this reference image of all the many that are very interesting. 
Oh, I lost my eye. It's right there. Is that it has these shapes that are just uh, blank white shapes on a white background. But they have that dark outline, which is pretty important to the composition. So just as soon as I put these eyes in, notice I'm changing them a little bit. I don't want it to look too copy pasty. Just using transform, command T. Now, do I need the little white inside the eye? I actually don't think I do at this moment, right? I think that works pretty well. But what I do need for the energy of this composition are all these white shapes. So for that, I am going to use, let's just start here, rectangles, right? And then transform them and distort them. And even though these will just give me four edge shapes, I could use uh, polygon shapes as well, right? It'll get me started. But now this is where the properties are different. Instead of just being filled with a color, if I double click on it, I'll fill it with a light color, not exactly white. But what you'll also see You get to these. Huh. How do we give it an outline, right? What's called a stroke. And you'll see up at the top, when you're using the shape tools, we have all the properties. So we have a fill that I just have as a slight pink. Let's just go ahead and make that solid white. But then we also have a stroke and that stroke has a red line through it. I can change that stroke to be a black outline and I can choose how thick that outline is. Like so, and I can even choose if it's a dotted outline or little periods or solid, right? And in Illustrator, we'll have even more options. So let's make that the property. So it looks like this. It's an outlined path now, which is kind of interesting. So if I alter it, that outline will, they're not two shapes, right? That, that outline stroke is part of the same vector. So if I Command-T it and warp it, that outline will warp with it, right? And if I duplicate it and then transform it to make something more complex like that, the outlines stay with it. So now let me do that same thing. Let's use a polygon tool. Let's do uh, five sides. And it will keep those same properties. Let's stretch it, warp it, rotate it, have it stand in for some of these objects. The specific shape of these objects isn't as important, I think, as just the energy of them. And I'm not going to take the time to do all of them, right? But if I just Command J, it's going to give me a lot of practice. Moving copies around transforming them. Moving them on top of other things. Right? That's going to give me my debris. Command J, transform, warp. This is one of those advantages of digital art, right? Making these perfect copies for each little thing saves me from having to, to remake them each time. Now, because I warped it and softened it, 
if I just keep copying the softened ones, they're going to lose their hard edges. So then I might go back to original. Sharp edged ones. Place those in and then command right bracket to bring them up above some of these layers. And then command J, duplicate it, move it over. So this is, these are real skills we're practicing here. Not the most exciting, but incredibly useful. And with practice, we can get really, really effective with them and fast. Again, deciding what details matter most. I'm blocking them in. Okay, there's one shape tool I haven't shown you. I've shown a few of you individually, but not through these demo videos. And that is the custom shape tool. So we've just been using and modifying these options here. But if you go to the custom shape tool, You'll have a bunch of clip art options, and you can actually load new vectors into these and customize your own. My favorite is the what I call the, the lumpy cloud. <laughs> and so for the lumpy cloud, I might put it here. I have no idea why it's green. I guess because that's what I had here as a shape. But what I can do is click it, make it whatever shape I want, and give it that stroke that I've been using. So I can see it. Then I can move it up above the helmet. This is gonna be my highlight at the top, right? And it just gives you a little bit more of a complex shape to work with. Whether it's the most appropriate shape or not, that's up to you to decide. So I'm going to try to use warp to make it stand in for this outline of this highlight. And again, I'm not doing every little highlight. I'm just trying to pick my battles. And then just with couple more of these shards and I think I'm in business. Again, I'm not trying to be a completist or do every single one. Just the ones that really help to break up the space, keep the eye movement matching. And they're so similar to each other, it's not, not very difficult. And then the only element left is the shadow underneath him. And so I'm going to use a custom shape for that because it's kind of a lumpy, weird shadow. And let's see, use custom shape again. Pull it out to the side, kind of like that. Change its properties. We want kind of a dark gray. And I don't want a stroke anymore. So I do the, the red crossbar. Then I can transform it. Oops. Command T. I'm going to flip it horizontal. So that tail end goes under the foot. Rotate it a little bit. Squash it a little bit more. Maybe warp out this side. And let's see what we've got. Pretty good. I'm just going to smooth out that little thing with an oval. And then I'll be ready to save it as a JPEG and submit. I just have to move these now. behind the foot and I'm done.
for those of you wanting professional careers using digital art, deadlines are everything. <laughs> so you do.